everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and today I'm back with your favorite show on YouTube. It is once again time for App Review. As always, I'm reviewing three of your applications that you submitted. And I can promise you the last of those applications is really, really epic. And now it's time for you to hit the subscribe button so you support this channel and upcoming videos. And then we can dive into today's application. All right, first application of the day is called MindLib, my mind map library. I didn't know that mind maps were still a thing in 2023, but here we go. Um, Karsten Klafke, actually, I think he's from Germany because the description, no, that's in English. I don't know, it just sounds German. He also created the Send Intent uh, repository for Capacitor, which I always wanted to try because um, that's actually really interesting and seems to be challenging to set up. Um, so go check it out if you're interested in it. And of course, install MindLib both on iOS and Android. So here's the application. Let's see. We got a splash screen. We got, ooh, we got an animation in the background. I just want to, initially I thought like, oh, this is like the usual boring screen and I can also scroll this. Uh, but yeah, that background animation, that is nice. I like it. Also, it seems like the application is in German, but I should be able to, no, I'm not able. I thought I would be able to click on this red DE thing up here. Uh, I don't know what it means, but I definitely can't use it. Um, I at least can create the imprint screen. So there are some editing uh, settings. Make sure if you yeah, like transforming an HTML application to a native application that you respect the save areas. You can use in, uh, the environment variables for the save area inset top and also bottom. So stuff like that doesn't happen. Uh, let's try and create an account. I really like that these days I can just use Apple sign in and I'm signed in. So here we go. Um, it is not your typical uh, application, I'd say. It has an interesting concept. So usually stuff like that is more at the top. I don't know where this is here. It looks like, no, I can't click. Okay, this is probably just my mind map. Yeah, and then I got something. So it would be really cool if I could drag around these things or uh, work a bit more with them. Let's see, I'm just gonna add test. Oh yeah, I can, oh, okay, I can add some. Oh my, what can I add? Okay, I can add. Oh, okay, I can add like real note information to the different notes in my mind map. Okay, that is actually an interesting concept. I mean, this navigation bar, if you have stuff that your users should click on, they should be reachable more towards the bottom because that is where your thumb is. So if you're using an application, I'm not using it usually not like, I might sometimes I'm using it like this, but usually I'm using it with my thumb. That's also why the navigation bar and the top bar is usually at the bottom. Um, we get an account screen. I see the same problem, so I mean, it's a custom hate here, uh, but it's definitely not the standard. Uh, besides that, yeah, a lot of information. I don't really like to center all of that content. I think that's not really what you want to do. This is most likely the imprint again. And then we do have a search functionality. I'm not 100% sure for what the search is, but what I do like are these. So this could be something like the Ion Accordion, but you can also do this just with a diff and um, some conditional logic to render that. Um, do you really want to disconnect the information? Yeah, yeah, oh, no. Export information. Oh yeah, you get the same format, but I don't know why these buttons are like bold or semi-bold, so uh, that is a bit bold to me. So the general idea is cool of that app. Um, I think a lot of this works, but this is one of the cases where there's really a lot of information like on this screen. I don't really know where I should look. Like there are four buttons up here. My mind map is here. There are like three different to uh, expand it. So it is just really confusing to my eye to find what's really important right now. It's better to just have like steps, different steps indicated or just one card uh, making it more important. Also, if this is like the most important part of your, your application, I would probably make that tab somehow bigger, somehow stand out because it's pretty much at the same level of the account and the imprint. And it, this page is definitely not as important as your imprint, right? Uh, so maybe, I don't know, a site menu could work better. 
um, something else. Because right now it doesn't really feel like this one place is the most important place. Anyway, it just closed. Um, still, if you're looking for a mind map library, it got quite a lot of reviews on Google Play. I think the iOS users are more, uh, there are just two ratings uh, with two stars. Uh, so probably better check it out on uh, Android, MindLib, my mind map library. Second application of the day is called Obim, Mood Tracker and Diary. Once again, available at Google Play and Apple Play Store by my good friend Amani, who I have worked with before. Uh, he's going the built in public route and he's done some other uh, apps before like use paper cloud So you could definitely check that out as well, but I was highly interested in the last one he did um, I also asked what the tech stack is like and he replied. Thank you Ionic react data is stored SQLite database on the user's device. So we're here safe with our data uh, Let's see where my app is. So here we go. Obim go time. Would you like to send? Oh, come on Didn't you watch my previous videos? Mm. Once again, I don't like this to just right in the beginning throw this dialogue to a user because I don't know what the notification's about. I don't know what this app is about. I don't want this. So, um, because you do have this introduction, that's perfect. Like, uh, welcome to Open, by the way, pretty nice font. That looks pretty cool. I made this app to help my wife, random fun fact, okay. You could just have something like swipe next and then explain why you need push notifications. I've seen this now in a lot of applications where they have this um, dialogue, this introduction, and they ask, okay, we also need camera access for this and that, and you press a button and then it brings up the permissions. So that's how I think it should be done. In terms of UI, this is pretty nicely done. So it looks like the status bar was used for the representation of the month. I can, yes, I can click it. So that brings up the kinda. I don't know if this is this the new Ionic date picker or is it just a regular wheel picker? I'm not sure, but I mean, the whole application looks cool, looks stylish and stuff. And then we got that overlay. It's just not fitting 100%. Maybe maybe at least give this rounded borders and a bit of border shadow. Um, besides that, I like that this application has a real color theme. So starting from the app icon, going through the different screenshots, and then of course in the application, um, very consistent with a the color theme. Also, I'm at this point kinda tired of seeing the default fab button. I think for a time this was pretty cool, but just say changing the background color, I think that's not doing it anymore. I just would like to see, maybe I'd like to see a few more shadows here and there. Uh, let's see, um, I like this, this is default island stuff, but that view is pretty cool. How are you feeling today? I don't know why there's such a big gap. Oh, okay, it adds the word. Uh, so you should probably in the default case make uh, like a question mark there. But I like this, uh, how it's doing this little, Little additional thing, you didn't have to do this, like bringing up the numbers, um, but it's just adding this little thing to the view. Uh, reviewing cool apps today. So that's definitely an awesome day. Uh, hit done. And then my, oh, for which day did I track this? I have absolutely no idea where I just tracked this. I think I should have tracked it for to, like today, but why is it not coming up? Ah, okay. it's. But why do we have this view? I don't know why we have this view actually because under activity it looks like this is where I see my score and this is also probably where I could open my previous data. I've seen this before on Twitter. <coughs> <coughs> I've seen this before on Twitter. I kind of like it. Uh, there's like this a uh, poster which you can hang where, where like boxes for the days of your life until you're like 80 or something. It reminds me of that. Um, and it gives you a really nice glance at the whole year. So I like that. Um, settings, yeah, we got the appearance. Uh, we can also toggle this to dark mode. Um, Twitter story behind, oh, there's, yeah, that's a Twitter feed behind the story. You know what? This is a cool, nice application. He made this because his wife had an idea or something and he just went ahead and created something that is probably not becoming editor's choice of Apple, but it's definitely a rock solid application. We got the inputs, we can write something for a day. I could see myself definitely using this because we got a quite nice overview here. Uh, we got a nice report and it's just easy to use. And I like these applications which just go out and create something and see how users react. So I, I assume if like 
uh, 10,000 people would use the application, he could easily come up with a concept to expand this, like having cloud sync and making that a pro purchase. But until then, it is just a cool application built with cool technology and probably a cool project to both show and to learn from. So definitely give him support. Check out Obim if you're looking for a simple mood tracker, mood tracker and diary, both uh, Google Play Store and also App Store. Third and last application of today is called Acreom Mobile. Um, this is a lightweight, fast, capable uh, application to track our nodes. And it caught my attention because I saw it on Twitter. Uh, thanks to Capacitor, Next.js and Vue.js, we've shipped our George's cross-platform mobile app. So this is exactly what Capacitor is about. Just use your favorite web tool, be it Next.js, be it Vue.js, React, Angular, and then throw in Capacitor and build an epic app. So this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, there's even a question from Liam uh, about UI components. So you can definitely also check that out, but let's see, I wanna see this in action. So remember in the background, there's probably not Ionic components, but view components and packages, but nonetheless, it is Capacitor and a native mobile app. And this is what I love. That was a perfect beginning from the splash screen, moving that thing up. Now we got something going on on that screen. Like this would be a, just a boring black screen with white buttons, but this up here makes it so interesting. Love it. And I also can't swipe this screen. <laughs> it's completely locked. Uh, let's go. Let's go with Apple as always. <laughs> All right, so sign in done. This was the loading and here we go. Welcome is a markdown knowledge base with text. And it looks a bit like I'm using the bear application uh, on iOS. It was somehow the same. Yeah, this is also what Ionic components usually do. I don't know how this worked with Vue, but probably it's also quite easy to implement. Let's see what we got. Um, I can move forward in days. So it looks like this is just basically on a per day basis. That is interesting. Uh, I should probably read through this. Then have a quick capture, ideas, issues, tasks with internet access, create a new task with plus, use long press for creating new documents, sync real time with desktop. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's say uh, create a video. I like this. This is pretty fast like the uh, Todoist input. It's probably not as powerful with the date stuff, um, but Oh, this feels really like, this feels totally natural. Please, is somebody still saying, oh, Capacitor, those apps don't look natural and don't do native? Well, what's your problem? Look at these swiping dialogues and what I can do with this going on here. Like, this is a perfectly, totally native application to me. I love it. Uh, it I, I don't get the concept completely because I probably should read through this. Uh, I assume I should use this uh, on my Mac as well, and then I would sync. That would be most likely pretty awesome. But overall, this is also funny with a long press. I should do a tutorial on that. Uh, I could do a new folder, then I can start a new page, and then I can put in slash to see commands. Oh, that is hot. That is cool. Then I can create like a cool code block. How do you cool, cool guys do this? PHP, am I doing this right? Echo, uh, I don't know how you echo something anymore in, in PHP. Um, this is cool, I like it. I really must admit, this is this is a really nice application. Beer has no tables. I don't know why this application, why Acrim can have tables easily in the first, like the first beta version and I'm using Beer since five years and I don't have tables. What is going on? So I've been clicking around wildly in this application because I just think that this is pretty cool. Like everything we can do in here feels really natural. And you wouldn't notice that this is a Next.js application with Vue.js and the transitions, like everything in this application really feels good, works good. We got the different sliders, we got a long tab, I got a haptic feedback when I do stuff like this. Um, on the pages, we can really use cool functionality like the PHP Markdown block I've used before. Uh, you can have these kind of overlays. I really like, I mean, it looks a bit like Tailwind, not too mobile-ish, um, but nonetheless, it is pretty, pretty advanced and pretty cool. Uh, so I can't, can't really say anything bad about this application. I don't know, maybe there could be more colors here and there and the tab bar could be a bit more interesting. Like this is really just uh, when I, it feels like Ionic is releasing the first beta version of something. Like it works great in terms of UI. 
um, in terms of features, but in terms of UI, there's definitely room for improvement. So uh, I would like to see a few more colors here and there, but from functionality, from usage, from feeling, uh, this is definitely a native application to me. And you can get it both on iOS and Android. I can't click them. Oh, it's opening a QR code. Oh, you're so fancy. You're way ahead of me. Uh, but it is definitely available here on the Play Store. Uh, this is the App Store rated five stars. And on the Play Store rated just 100 downloads. This app deserves more. Give it a try. Check it out. Acrium. You can also find the thread here uh, at Martin Enters. I'm going to put the link below this video as well. Give it a try to see a Next.js application with Vue.js and Capacitor. And as a result, a completely native mobile application. All right, and that's it for today's app review. I hope you enjoyed these three applications. I don't know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you got any other applications that you wanna see on this show, leave a comment below this video. Hit the subscribe button. Check out galaxies.dev if you wanna become an epic developer at the edge of web and mobile development. Until then, happy coding, Simon.